Okay, so here is our map of inventory thoroughness. I've recolored it in a ramp from green to purple. So green means low inventory thoroughness and purple means high. It's a little bit deceptive because of this one. Notice that QGIS inserts that. Now it looks a little bit more realistic. So you can see that these unsampled squares around the edges are no longer showing up as well sampled. So the real question is, where do we decide which, what level of purple or what criteria do we use to decide uh, what is well sampled? Um, I will note that in some of the projects in this project, in this overall course project, what we've done is to um, use density of sampling, so number of samples per unit area. And those are usually projects when we're not able to calculate completeness values. But if you remember back to the table we generated in the last movie, um, we can do some graphics that help us to explore perhaps the relationship between completeness on the y-axis and sample size per cell on the x-axis. Notice that I put the sample size on a logarithmic scale. Now, I'm not going to go into all of the logic behind picking what is well known or not. Um, suffice it to say that you need to use multiple criteria. You can't use C only. For example, look at this uh, plot, this, this grid square, which had a sample size of 7, but managed a relatively high value of C. So, as you will remember from the class, it's complicated. You can use C, you can use sample size, you can use aerial density, etc. Um, let's just imagine for this particular application to use any point that has more than about 650 um, samples in the cell and a C value of 0.5 or greater. So again, a lot of thinking needs to go into that and it needs to be well documented in your, in your methods section. But really all we're going to do for the moment is we're going to go in and we're going to pick out the cells that have a C of 0.5 or better, which you can see are five cells right here. And if we look at those on the map, there are these five red cells. And because those are selected, we can then go to Save As. And we can call that perhaps uh, well sampled, but notice save only selected features and add saved file to map. And so now we have a shape file that is just those five well sampled grid squares. And that's where we're going to stop this film just so that you can reflect for a moment on, okay, now we have identified our well-known squares.